First off, I gotta say, I gotta tell you how amazing you are because you just blow me away. Jagged was the very last show I saw before the shutdown um, Mm -hmm. back in March. So it's like a little full circle. I love it. You absolutely just knocked it out of the park. You were amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So we can get started whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So it's been a little while since we've been able to see anyone perform live, unfortunately. But last November, you made your Broadway debut as Frankie in the all-new Alanis Morissette musical, Jagged Little Pill. So to start us off, tell me a little bit about Frankie and her character. Sure. Uh, Frankie is a queer Black woman adopted into a white family. Uh, I say woman. She's 16. She's a child. Um, But yeah, she's adopted into this white family when she was a baby. uh, So she doesn't really know a lot about her biological family. Uh, She is raised in Greenport, Connecticut, which is this very um, well-off area of Connecticut, very... McMansion, very white picket fence, very much like wealthy uh, Connecticut. And um, she is an activist. Uh, She is a spiritual, uh, she's she's just a deep thinker. She's a dreamer. She's a uh, fighter. She is um, someone who deals a lot with insecurities. Uh, and so she spends a lot of time fighting for other people the same way she wants to be fought for, which I find really, really sweet. Um, but yeah, that's Frankie. We follow her journey through, um, her junior year of high school. Uh, she is trying to figure out where she fits in in this predominantly white, predominantly straight space as a non-white, non-straight uh, young girl. And she gets into some trouble as we all do when we're trying to navigate who we are and where we are and what we want to do with our lives. And yeah, I have so much fun with her. Beautiful, you really radiate that. You can see that amount of fun you have through your performance, which I think is so beautiful. You Thank were nominated you. for your very first Tony for your performance as Frankie. That is incredible. How does this make you feel? What does this mean to you? I mean, it, it, it means everything to me. Uh, I ha- uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. It's very hard to put words to it sometimes because I have been dreaming about having a Tony nomination since I knew what musical theater was and since I knew that like I wanted to be a part of it in whatever form or fashion I fell into it. Um, And so getting a Tony nomination for my debut, being as young as I am uh, with just the level of experience that I have and the family that I have and the history of my family, uh, it it just, it's really awesome. (laughs) I don't have like a, a lot of flowery wording for it. It's just a really, really cool thing that's happened and I'm grateful for it. And especially during this time, it it feels good to have something to celebrate. I feel a little guilty sometimes celebrating in the middle of these terrifying times. But um, yeah, it's it is truly the the maker of this year uh, is my Tony nomination, which is so weird to think about sometimes. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to see the Tonys. Um, how you. has the Broadway shutdown been for you? How would you say it's affected you as a person and an actress? Um, it's been tough. I mean, uh, for the whole industry, um, actors, crew, all of us alike, where uh, it, 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 it's been really, really tough and really, really hard and, and very heartbreaking. Um, but I have found the silver lining of uh, navigating like, just because I'm not on Broadway doesn't mean that I can't be creative. It doesn't mean that I uh, can't um, still sing and dance and and act and flex my creative muscles. It's just, I have to find different ways of doing it. Um, And that has been really, really awesome. Finding um, where my joy is and where my, where else my joy can be when I don't have access to my eight show a week uh, dream. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's been tough, but I've been navigating my mental health and my emotional health during these times, which I'm really grateful for to have a, a sort of quieter moment to do the necessary work that is keeping my mental health in check. Um, and I'm also figuring out who I am outside of Broadway. And I'm learning that I really love cooking and that, um, I love connecting with people and I love, uh, teaching, oh, well, teaching, um, I love doing little Zoom sessions and Q&As and, and all that stuff. I love interacting with people and um, having a quieter time where I don't have a lot of my focus and a lot of my energy in something that is, although a dream, also very just exhausting and that I have this sort of extra energy to do the more fun stuff and do the more um, fulfilling stuff. Yeah, you kind of have that time to just settle down and be in touch with yourself. I think that's definitely a blessing in all of this. Jack oh, and Paul, yeah. yeah, totally. Jack and Little Pill is such an important show because it focuses on a lot of pressing issues we face in society today and a lot of messages that people need to hear through this really brilliant storyline and obviously fantastic music. What do you want viewers who see the show to take away from it? What, what would you say that the message is? Um, I think, well, when we first started, actually, I'll start from here. When we started getting reviews for the show, I read them. I know it's, 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 I've been advised to not read reviews, but I am very much young. And so I want to know what people think. Um, and a lot of the reviews we were getting was that we were tackling too much and that we were trying to fit too many things into a uh, two, two and a half hour show. And we were just trying to do too much and, um, I think that that's the essence of life itself. I feel like if we were to sit down and write every single issue we tackled in a day or in a week or in two years, like the show covers, um, there would be a lot. There would be a lot of issues that we tackle and a lot of nuance and a lot of, of, of complexities that are very overwhelming. And so if, we're going to try and put on a show that accurately represents the life of a family living in the times that we do, uh, living in the Connecticut that is very much real. It's a very real place. Um, and yeah, I feel like it would, we wouldn't be telling the full truth if we tried to make an easy to digest, um, not as deeply complex as real life. If we were trying to put real life on stage, we have to take the complexities that come with real life. And so I hope that people leaving the show leave with, of course, a feeling of being lifted and, and feeling informed and ready to tackle the outside world. But I also um, want them to leave knowing that everything is happening all the time. And there's no easy way of, of, of approaching all of life's complexities. And so what I want people to leave with is just, if, if they move from a place of honesty and they move from a place of, of wanting to know and wanting to be present and wanting to just do all that they can for the greater good of not just themselves, but for everybody else, for people who may not look like them, for people who may not be going through the same things they're going through, for people who don't love like they do, people who don't worship like they do. Um, it's still important to leave feeling as though you are ready to do anything and everything you can to make sure that everyone lives as comfortably as those who are more likely to live comfortably, white, straight, cis, able-bodied, wealthy folks. It's, uh, it's, it's important for um, people to leave knowing that there are experiences that are worthy of time, worthy of protection, worthy of space but also don't look exactly like theirs. That was such a brilliant, beautiful answer. And I feel like in the show you have, you have MJ trying to pretend that life doesn't have any complexities. So I think that whole putting that all together and it's like, this is life, this is real life, we can't hide this. is such a gem and such a brilliant show to have because that is kind of rare, I feel like today. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, circling a little back to the shutdown, do you remember what it was like when you guys first heard about it? What was it like at work oh, that yeah. day? <laughs> um, I remember 
I was sitting on my stairs because I don't live in the city. I live in Westchester. I live uh, like 20 minutes outside the city. And um, I remember I was sitting with my makeup half done on the phone with my stage manager like, hey, am I getting on the train? Am I calling this Uber? Like things are looking pretty bleak. And he was like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have answers for you because everyone was trying to figure out like, yo, are we still employed? Um, but uh, yeah, it was a really, it felt like something out of Black Mirror. It really felt like something out of like a, 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 a movie. Like I felt like time was moving in slow motion and everything was just like really unknown. And I don't do well with not with the unknown. And so, um, yeah. It, it was a it was a really weird day, um, but the days after were I think even weirder. Of just like when are we coming back? Are we coming back? How are we coming back? What's that going to look like? It, um, yeah, it was a um, really confusing time. But I feel like um, if I can get through that sort of like drastic life change, I can I can get through <laughs> I can get through a lot more than I thought I could. Definitely, I could totally imagine that it was insane and I feel like mm -hmm. insane for me as a viewer I can't imagine how it was for all of you guys circling back even farther do you remember what your first performance was like what were those emotions like that night uh first performance of the Broadhurst mm -hmm. um first preview was a dream um I missed first preview at ART where we did the out of town tryout. I missed like the world world premiere, which I'm still heartbroken about because I was injured. But the fact that I could have my first preview on Broadway and be there and be with my cast, it, it, it was everything. Um, my mom was there, my mom's there for everything, but um, she was there and I remember um, the show was over, we were doing curtain call. And I remember I just took like a really deep, oh, I'm gonna get emotional. I took a really okay. deep breath. I took a really deep breath and I was like, I can never ever forget this moment because I'm never gonna have this moment again. Um, and I remember trotting out onto the stage and um, blowing a kiss to my mom who was sitting in the front orchestra, front and to the left a little ways. I remember blowing a kiss to her and taking my bow and just, I remember the theater smelled like static. And I, it, it's a weird sentence, but it just, it, it's it, like, you could smell the energy in the room. It was a really, really magical night. And then we got to watch the music video for You Learn. And I remember there's a photo of it circulating somewhere. And I remember just clutching Lauren Patton who plays <laughs> Joe. I remember just like holding her and holding her and holding her. Cause I felt like I was gonna float away if I didn't have something to hold on to. And Lauren has just been through everything with the show with me. And we've been through a lot with the show and just being able to um, hold her in that moment was super special to me. And having my mom right behind me was so important and just having a full theater. And it just, it, it was one of those moments of undeniable joy. Uh, and, and I, um, I think back to that day a lot because sometimes I get really sad. <laughs> sometimes I just get really sad. And I think back to those joyful, joyful moments of, of um, undeniable joy and knowing that there are going to be more moments like that again. It just, it gets me through. <laughs> I could imagine that, you know, pushing through Broadway's coming back. It will maybe a little time oh, yeah. is coming back. We'll be back better mm -hmm. than ever. One of my, speaking of Lauren, actually, one of my favorite dynamics in the show is the way you guys kind of interact on stage, the whole cast, your performances and on stage relationships with Lauren and also Antonio. They're very different, but they're both these passionate, beautiful performances. What was it like working with them? And how did you guys kind of capture those uh, different emotions? Um, I'll start with Lauren because I've known her longer. Um, we... I met Lauren the first day of the reading. Um, me and Lauren have been playing our respective characters since sort of the genesis of this whole uh, show movement masterpiece. Um, we, she's always just been my rock. I feel like um, she was someone who recognized how nervous I was because I was 17 working with industry 
titans. Um, and I was so nervous and so scared and just really embarrassed and like didn't want to take up too much space, really. Um, and Lauren was really that person who was like keeping an eye out for me because we had to have really great chemistry during this reading and we didn't have a lot of time. And so Lauren was someone who just made me feel really confident and really safe and um, really cared for. And our friendship has just really blossomed from there, I feel like Lauren is one of my best friends now just because Aww. of the time we've spent together and just because of the relationship that we have. She's just someone who looks out for me and I, I look out for her and it just works out really, really well and I love her a lot. Um, with Antonio, uh, I met him during a workshop um, and I remember I was very used to being the only teenager. I was very used to being the only baby. I was, um, I was really used to it. And then I remember I sort of clocked him at a dance call um, for Jagged. I remember seeing him and I was like, oh, they want him to be Phoenix. Cause I remember he looked really, really young. And I was like, oh, that they, they, I know they want him to play Phoenix. Um, and he did really, really well. And I was very happy for him. Um, and then I remember walking out of the elevators at New 42 where we were rehearsing and seeing him sitting there with his lunchbox. And I was like, you're my best friend now. Um, <laughs> and I made sure to keep that promise. Uh, he was really my saving grace. Uh, I remember um, during the workshop we had, because of state law, if you're still in high school, you have to take time out of your work day to go do your schoolwork. And I remember Antonio and I would show up an hour early, groggy as anything, coffee in hand. Well, he had coffee, I had tea. Um, and I remember we just really, really bonded because we both hated being there. Um, we both were very much like, I want to do my job. I want to sing, I want to dance, I want to be an actor, I want to be downstairs, I don't want to be up here stuck in high school. Um, and we just really, really bonded. And he has been like the best friend, best brother, best co-star, just like a, a top-notch dude. And I am super grateful for him and super grateful for our friendship because he's definitely someone who I'm going to be friends with forever, whether he likes it or not. Um, because he got me, we got each other through our debut process. Like there, we have this bond that is really specific. And, and I just, again, I, I love him too. I love everyone in that cast, but Lauren and Antonio, because of the relationships we have on stage and off stage, I feel like those are the two people that I have become super duper close to and people who I will only be getting closer to as we age and grow and, and, and get back into theater. I'm excited to get back on stage with them again. It warms my heart that you all have, you know, such amazing relationships off stage because you can really see that on stage. Um, you can mm -hmm. kind of bring that dynamic there. Tell me a little bit about your rehearsal process. What was that like? Besides having to show uh, up early. <laughs> yeah. Um, besides having to show up early, um, it, it was really fun. I feel like my favorite part of um, putting a show together, uh, even though this is my debut, this is my first like professional experience, but um, having everyone in the room and getting the rehearsal energy and just like the collaborative energy, I feel like during rehearsal is when everyone feels their most creative. And so um, the rehearsal process was great. Table working was great. Um, I, I don't consider myself a um, classically trained dancer. I don't because I'm not. Um, and so dance rehearsal was the thing um, that always made me the most intimidated simply because our choreographer is just ridiculously talented and his imagery and his mind uh, is just, he he sees, I feel like he sees one more dimension than everybody else, City Larby. He's a genius. Um, and so, yeah, dance rehearsal was the thing that made me the most nervous, but it was also the most fun because um, everyone in the cast, when we saw the choreography, we were like, <laughs> okay, okay, cool, great, amazing, <laughs> awesome. Don't know how that's gonna happen, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, it was just, I feel like rehearsal was when the cast moved from a cast to a cast family, 
because rehearsal, we're doing this really tough show. It's, 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 it's a fantastic show, but we, we go through a lot. Um, and uh, as actors, uh, we are channeling a lot, of, a lot of deep, heavy, sticky stuff. And in order to feel safe, to be vulnerable, you have to have a level of, of, of um, comfortability with the people you're surrounded with. And you have to have a level of just like respect for the people you're around. And I feel like the creative energy, plus the respect that we had for the show and the work that we were doing, and plus the love that we have for the show that we're doing and the excitement of um, a really well done musical and also having the backing of multi Grammy award winning um, work and, and, uh, and industry titans that Diane Paulus, Tom Kitt, Diablo Cody, Alanis and Larby are, um, it just it was, really cool to know that that collective group of people were all super passionate and all just really excited to get it all together and all working. And the rehearsal space was just the most open, the most welcoming, the most collaborative, the most just as an actor and as someone coming into my debut, I feel like I really lucked out. I sort of got like the best of everything on my first shot. And um, it, it just, I hadn't really felt like cared for and seen in the way that I did in that rehearsal space. And now whenever I work on anything else again, I feel like I'm gonna be comparing it to this experience. Um, but yeah, I, I miss the rehearsal times. I miss it. And I'm excited to get back to it because I'm sure there'll be another period like that before everything gets back on stage. Definitely. I'm so excited to hear about it when it happens. Um, what was it like learning Alanis' songs in a Broadway context? Because obviously these are songs that everyone's heard. What was it like? Tell me about that process of kind of learning the adaptations for Broadway. How did you navigate that? Um, so the show, the songs themselves uh, changed order a lot. And as the order changed, so did their context. Um, I remember that I Would Be Good originally wasn't a trio. It was originally a Frankie solo and and um, watching how that song specific, specifically uh, has changed throughout the um, history of the show. It's been really interesting. But the, um, I remember the first day Alanis came in. I remember that day. It was the day that we were working Ironic. Um, and it's like one of the solos that I'm the most nervous about because it's really just like just me singing until Antonio saves me again. Um, <laughs> and I remember um, all of the desks were out and I was facing, I, I, the, the door was behind me, um, but I knew that was the day where Alanis was coming in and I was just like, Celia, you gotta stay calm. <laughs> can't freak out and like I remember hearing the door open and the entire room went silent and I was like oh she's here oh she's here um and she was just the best the the, the absolute best so wise so giving of herself so present so open to change so open to new context and so just giving of herself and her experience and and after the first run through we did i just remember she just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried um and i still um want to do very right by her and i want to do i want her to think that we're doing a good thing and the fact that we have her just undying support and uh, just all of the wisdom that she shared with us and all of just the joy that she shared with us. I'm so grateful for her and, and so grateful for all that she's given to this show, both literally, but also like emotionally and mentally. And just, it's clear that she entered this experience at this, at, like not literally at the same level of us. She's still very much uh, on the upper echelon. Um, but she just came with the same energy of like, I'm an active collaborating student, like we all were in that moment of just like, I am a student of the show. I am a member of the community that is learning what the show is. I am trying to make it shake just like the rest of y'all. So she came with a level of humility that I was blown away by, but also like 
so warmed by as well. She truly a, a, a incredible artist, but also just a wonderful human being. I, I have nothing but good things to say about her. She's just kind and warm and honest and 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 humble. She's all, all of the best qualities, really. And she's also my boss, which is great. <laughs> I love the way you recount these experiences. You seem to have such fond memories of everything and the way you tell it is so beautiful. I absolutely adore that. Um, Thank you. you. Of course. Have you always wanted to be on Broadway? Tell me about your kind of journey from that. Um, I didn't know that I wanted to be on Broadway until I was in like middle school, high school. I knew that I wanted to be on stage. I knew that I wanted to perform I, when I was like six ish, six or seven. Um, that's what I knew that I just wanted to like be on stage and have everyone's attention and listen to myself talk for a while. Um, that's what it was when I was young. Now it has turned into something <laughs> a lot more substantial now that I know what I'm doing. Um, but when I was little, I just loved performing. I loved, um, guiding people's attention. I loved, uh, holding people. I, I just loved having a group of people in the palm of my hand and like, I am so ready to inform you with all of the amazingness that I have been gathering. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just wanted to tell stories and have people listen to them because I felt like I was very creative and I always had a expansive imagination um and i remember playing with dolls uh until i was a lot older than most people were when they stopped playing with dolls um but i just remember i would create these like mini soap operas and like write down the context of the i like i i, I put on shows in my doll houses um I but uh <laughs> yeah um and so yeah i knew that i wanted to act um I knew that like I loved singing, but I didn't think I was like a strong enough singer to like do both of those at the same time and have both of those things sort of carry my career. Um, and yeah, dancing was never my strong suit, but I'm an empowered mover and that's what I stand by. I'm a very empowered mover. If you give me the choreography, I can nail it. But like asking me to give you an improv to a song it's just not in my wheelhouse, <laughs> but um, choreography I can do well with. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be an actor. I uh, wanted to do Shakespeare. Shakespeare was like my first theater love because I was introduced to Shakespeare at a really young age. I was introduced to Shakespeare at like first grade because the school I went to, um, the head of the program really, really wanted um, the kids to have a, um, understanding of the arts and I feel like for anyone Shakespeare is like that's where the arts even though obviously not but Shakespeare is like everyone's sort of first introduction to theater um and so yeah that's sort of how it all came to be I started doing singing and acting at the same time in high school outside of school and I went to a conservatory for two years um two summers um and I fell in love with musical theater even more there. And now I have been lucky enough to been blessed with an opportunity to do it eight times a week. And then a pandemic happened, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a weird timeline, but um, it, it, knowing myself and knowing how um, things sort of tend to fall together in whatever way they do, it, 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 it feels very much like my life for things to sort of ebb and flow and happen the way they do and have some of my life in high school prepare me for what I was gonna be talking about in Jagged Little Pill and, and then I could use my lived experience to inform Frankie and um, let Frankie inform me. And now I feel like a lot of my personality has come from what I've learned in Frankie and a lot of Frankie's personality comes from what I was dealing with when I was younger. And um, yeah, it just sort of all fell together in a really, really cool way. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I said, I love how you channel that. Looking at the show, you have to have so much pride for everything you guys have created. It's so admirable. It's such a beautiful piece by everyone. You all work together to just create this amazing thing. What about the show are you most proud of? Oh, you're gonna make me cry. Um, I, 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 I'm so proud of all of it. <laughs> I'm just like, 
all of it I'm so proud of, but I'm really proud of how, oh, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm just really proud of my cast. Like, I'm just like, we have been thrown this, well, not thrown, we have been given and gifted this um, really incredible, impactful, deep story. And it's a lot. It's a lot. And the fact that this cast family has come together and we have found this, um, th this sort of just trajectory and we have found the choreography of how the show moves and how the show breathes from start to stop. Uh, and we have found the backstage choreography and we've just sort of make it feel like second nature. And um, we found a way to make it look a lot easier than it is. <laughs> And I'm just really, really proud of us and all the growth that we've had and everything that we've been doing. And I, I just, I'm, I love them. Oh, I'm getting very emotional. I love them all a lot. And the fact that we were able to do everything that we did um, when the show was up and the fact that we still have passion and joy and, and energy and something to give during quarantine and we still have, uh, inspiration to do the Macy's Day Parade and we still have um, all of the joy to do the talkbacks and the stars in the house things that we do sometimes and just the fact that we all still have the same love and the same joy that we had for the show during its beginning and the fact that I can still see that I'm just really I'm really really proud of us. I'm so proud of you guys too it's beautiful to see. Last but very certainly not least, if you could give oh, no. one, <laughs> I know, <laughs> if you could give one message to everyone who's seen the show and will see it once Broadway's back, because we'll be back before we know it, what would it be? Um, I would say, mm, sorry, I hear my cat outside. <laughs> no, it's okay. What's his name? Um, Pongo. Um, I would say let it move you but also take it with a grain of salt like see the show for what it is come in with an open mind uh write down however you feel after it write it down or vote or voice note it just just as soon as you get a chance with yourself write down how you feel and um then when i say take it with a grain of salt i mean know that the show is one experience and the show is one thing. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to encapsulate the world or at least the country. Um, and we're trying to take all of these people you've seen before. You've seen the stressed out mom. You've seen the workaholic dad. You've seen the pressured son. You've seen the misunderstood daughter. Uh, you, 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 we all know these people. And so, take that experience and take the people you know and know that like there are ways in which the world of Jack and Little Pill and the real world intersect and there are ways that they don't. Um, and um, yeah, just let it move you, uh, recognize how you feel after it, uh, n recognize, uh, not recognize, but like identify who you see yourself in or if you see yourself in this world or if you don't. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I would just say use it less as like a, a, a typical, uh, and I say typical, but, um, a, a more, um, stereotypical Broadway show is like this thing you go to, to escape the outside world and this, and this majestical, fantastical world that is Broadway and, and, um, make it more personal than that, make it more casual than that, uh, let it be a something that a, a side of the world that you may have not seen before, or a um, a storyline you may not have seen before, or these lived experiences that you may not resonate with, or people that you may not even know about, um, and let those inform you and move you through your day to day. Because I think at the end of the day, what we're trying to do with the show is inform people on experiences that they not that, that they may not relate with. Um, and inform them on experiences that they may not know about or may not recognize as like 
true issues and 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 things that we that must be addressed in order for there to be like true justice if anywhere in any sense um and so yeah um let it inform you uh use it as a a map as as a as a way to sort of navigate yourself through life and meeting new people and and learning about new things and as you continue to broaden your activism and and include more people in in the um groups that you fight for uh let these characters um work their way into those groups as well absolutely this show is so important you tackle all so many issues at once you tackle it's a, it's what a lot of people need to hear and see right now it's so important in today's world and you capture that you do that that is so brilliant you have to have so much pride for that um, you should you. be so proud of what you've created Celia, thank you so, so, so much for joining me today. I can't thank you enough. This meant so much to me. You're incredible. I'm so excited for the parade. We're going to see you very soon. And I can't wait to see you on Broadway's back. I'll be right in that front row. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This of been course. Bye, Celia. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy it. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>